This is AWS On Air, live at reInvent, and we've got a really exciting segment right here uh, about sustainability. Um, but let's introduce to this fabulous group here of hosts. My name is Jillian Ford, and I'm a startup solutions architect. I've got an amazing co-host over here. Nathan Peck, and uh, we have our guest. Yes. Hi, I'm Will Hughes, and I'm the global lead for water stewardship at AWS. Water stewardship. So, can you tell us about how water really fits into the overall theme of sustainability at AWS? Sure. So we've had a couple sustainability goals at AWS for the past few years. One is around renewable energy and operating 100% with renewable energy by 2030. We're actually on schedule to meet that five years ahead of time wow. in 2025. So we're making great progress cool. there. The other, the other goal the other goal is around net zero carbon. The Climate Pledge is a sustainability commitment that Amazon, the broader company, launched in 2019. And the goal there is to be net zero carbon in our operations by 2040, which is 10 years ahead of the commitments under the Paris Climate Agreement. This week, we announced another steward, water, steward, or a sustainability commitment around water stewardship. And this is just around AWS, where those other goals have been for Amazon-wide. Um, and the, the goal there is that by 2030, we're going to be returning more water to communities than we use in AWS operations. Wow. So we're going to do that by both reducing our water use within our data centers, and also by investing in projects within communities to increase water availability. So, so I guess uh, walk us through a little bit about what this water is is doing, because you know I, I think about my computer here. You know, I, yeah. there's no water you don't involved. Don't see any with this. water. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, if I mix yeah. water with this computer, it's 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 dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so what what are we? What is the AWS data center actually using the water for? Yeah. So, at a lot of our data data centers, we're using water for cooling. Is the okay. short answer. Mm. So. Data centers get hot with all those servers in them. <laughs> There's a couple different ways that you can cool a data center. So you can basically flip on the air conditioner, but mm -hmm. the problem with that is it uses a lot more energy. And then, and then your carbon is going to exactly. be Exactly, and I just, <laughs> those <laughs> two goals that we just talked about, renewable energy and carbon, those get a lot harder to meet if we do that air conditioning approach all the time. So our preferred method of cooling for AWS is to use an evaporative cooling system. So a lot of the year, we're actually just using the outside air. Mm. But then on the hottest days, we turn on this water-cooled system, which kind of drips water down in evaporative media. And as the water evaporates, it pulls the heat out with it. Mm. It's a super water-efficient design. And so what we're doing here is we're trying to, and it's actually energy efficient too. So with these goals, we're around renewable energy and carbon and around water now. We're managing both of those things together to try to minimize the impact on both of those resources at the same time. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Wow. I mean, <laughs> this is just like mind blowing. So <laughs> I, that's kind of my reaction right now. Um, you were talking about earlier about like also bringing water back into the community yeah. as part of this. Can you tell us more about what does that really mean? Sure. Well, let me give kind of the broader, there are four strategies and let me yeah, go through all those. So the first three are really related to our data centers themselves. Okay. So number one is around efficiency. The other really cool part of the release that we made this week around water positive, so we also announced our water efficiency metric for the first time. Wow. So at a global level across all of our data centers, there's this metric. It's liters of water used per kilowatt hour of IT load. So you basically take all of the water that you use globally, mm -hmm. and then you divide that by all the energy that you use to run your data centers. Mm -hmm. And we use 0.25 liters per kilowatt hour Wow. which is a leader in the industry on water efficiency. You see wow. a lot of other water efficiency scores in the like one liter or even above, yeah. we're a quarter of a liter per kilowatt hour. That's huge. So that's partially driven by the, what I already talked about around the evaporative cooling design, super efficient. We also use some AWS services, like IIoT services, wow. to look at our water use in real time and compare it to what we think we should be using so that we can immediately figure out if, there, if there's a valve stuck open or mm. if something about the data center operations isn't quite right, mm. then we can go find those areas and we can fix them and eliminate any water waste. And then we also use treatment within the data center to cycle that water through as many times as possible before we discharge it. So mm. 
Efficiency, that's one of the strategies. And we're doing a great job on it already, and we're going to continue to double down on that going forward. The second strategy is around sustainable water sources. So, you know, when we turn on the tap to get a glass of water, <laughs> it's clean, drinkable water. Yeah. And a lot of the data center industry, we use that drinkable water for cooling, too. We don't yeah. actually really need to. Uh. We can use lower quality water. So mm -hmm. wow. we are using recycled water in 20 of our data centers right now instead of drinking water. Where recycled, does the recycled you know what water, that is? Where does the recycled yeah. water come from? It comes yeah. from the sewage plant? It's or? treated sewage. Oh, um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Which sounds gross, but it's treated to a really high level. Mm -hmm. So it's perfectly safe to use in the data center, but it's not something that you're going to put, bring into your home and put yeah. in your tap, right? <laughs> so if we use recycled water, that means we use that clean drinking water. We leave it for the rest of the community to use. That makes sense. So we're continuing to invest in that and try to bring more recycled water into our data centers for cooling. The third thing and the final thing within our data center footprint is around reusing that cooling water. So you know how I said we cycle it through as many times as possible? It gets to a point where we do have to discharge and bring in fresh water. Mm -hmm. But we can still use that cooling water, the spent cooling water, for other uses. And so in some places, we're directly providing it to farmers so they can use that water in irrigation. So we want to make sure that we're not wasting any water here, right? We use wow. it as much as we can, and then it can be used for another purpose uh, without any further treatment. So that's what we're wow. doing to minimize our impact. And then the last piece, which you were asking about, Jillian, is around working within the communities. And that's how we get to the rest of the way to that net positive water impact, is by supporting projects within communities to replenish water. We call them wow. replenishment projects. Um, and it, it, there are different types of projects, because there are different types of water challenges. In California, in Australia, in Cape Town, South Africa, it's really about scarcity, right? Mm -hmm. um, they use a very high percentage of the water in those watersheds. It's kind of already spoken for, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we can help just bring more water back to the community, that's a really good thing. Yeah. In other places, it's about water quality. In the eastern US, you know, it's more about it rains a lot. And mm -hmm. you get runoff. And that runoff carries all the bad stuff on the roads and parking lots into the waterways. Mm -hmm. So there, we're thinking more about how can we reduce that runoff? Wow. And finally, in some other places, it's about water access, where people don't have regular access to clean water. We're helping to bring that access to them in the communities where we're operating. Wow. This is so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're tailoring the program to the specific locales where that data yeah. center is yeah. to make sure that it's being wa water positive, not just for some metric that right. people back in Seattle yep. are, are like focusing on, but water positive for that local community yeah, and what yeah. they so need cool. there. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's what's going to be meaningful. Yeah. And we're, do we're trying to tailor that in a couple different ways. So one, we're looking at a lot of data to figure out what does wow. the data tell us about what that key water challenge is, right? Wow. Um, we can compare across different regions and see how much of the available supply are, you, are they using. If it's only 20% and 80% is still there, okay, you're probably all right from scarcity. You can also look at, you know, what are the levels of different contaminants. So maybe that's something we need to address. So we use data, but then we also want to engage with the community and ask them what's going to be meaningful so that wow. we make sure we're investing in projects that are going to have the greatest possible impact. It okay. is so fascinating how much has like gone into this project. Mm. And so we've got a goal. Yeah. And how is it that AWS is measuring and sharing its progress towards the goal? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a key one overall is this water efficiency score yeah. that we just released for the first time. So, so cool. uh, we're really proud to show our progress that we've already made on that. Wow. Uh, we're going to keep updating that every year. So uh, we've, we've got a page where we'll be displaying that. We also, all of these different types of projects, right? Recycled water, efficiency, w t wastewater reuse, as well as replenishment projects. All of those are also going on a web page. So you can go in and see, all right, what have they invested in recently? Where have they done those projects? What are they delivering back to the community? Those are also things that we're going to be updating constantly so that people can continue to see how we're working towards that goal. So cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm clicking around the website right now, and uh, I'm seeing cool stuff like rainwater collection systems and like sending water back to uh, uh, farmers in the area and like all, all kind of a very, very cool thing. So I d highly recommend looking at this. Maybe we can drop that link into the chat for uh, sustainability at about Amazon.com and the water stewardship page uh, for everyone to take a look at. 
so cool. Yeah, you were mentioning earlier about like some that you're using AWS services mm -hmm. as part of this project. Can you just like, share with us what exactly you're using? Yeah, we're using them in a few different ways. Uh, so, as I talked about before, it's that uh, you know the monitoring of water use within our data centers in real time. So we're using a lot of those AWS IoT services uh, where we've got water meters in the buildings and all of that comes into a centralized dashboard so that wow. we can see in real time how much water we're using. And then we're also using AWS services to kind of model out what should a data center of this design type with this cooling system in this climate, given this weather, like all of those things, what should it be using? There's a lot of mm. complexity there as wow. well. And so there's a lot of calculations, all of that you know, lives in AWS, all of that runs in AWS to do that matching of demand in real time versus what we think it should be, and then the alarming and ticketing that it automatically generates back to us so that we can go figure out what the problem is and then avoid water waste. So that's one suite of services that we're using within our actual data center operations. Another thing that we're doing is using partners that have built on AWS to oh. assess water risk within our operations. So we do not use water for cooling everywhere. There are certain places that we look at when we're going into a new region and we're trying to figure out, can we use re water responsibly for cooling a data center? There are certain places where the answer to that question is no. Mm. Uh, Cape Town, South Africa, you may have seen the, the headlines back in 20, 2018 and 2019 where they were approaching what they call day zero when there yeah. just wasn't gonna be enough water to even turn on the wow. taps. Oh so you're gonna turn on the tap, nothing would come out, right? Wow. They've got serious water scarcity challenges there. And in a place like that, as we're making the decisions about building new data centers in that region, we do a really careful analysis before we build anything. Mm -hmm. and, and we ask ourselves, can we use water responsibly and safely? Is it the right decision for our business, for our customers, and for the community? And in certain cases, the answer is no. But how, do, how are we making that assessment, right? Well, there's a partner that called Water Plan that has built a really industry-leading water risk tool. And they, they're using a whole bunch of data sources they pull together into this mapping that allows us to say, all right, our data centers are here. What's the risk around water quantity, water quality, water mm -hmm. access? all of those key elements that go into that type of decision. So I imagine even looking at like yeah. climate change, maybe yeah. you could use water today, but five years from now, water is going to reach yeah. a scarcity oh, that's moment. A good point. Yeah. They're going to regret <laughs> having water yeah. cooling if you yeah. build up water cooling today. Absolutely, because <laughs> these are big investments we're making. We don't want to yeah. make the wrong investment for us or for the community. Mm -hmm. And so we're using partners that have built on AWS with those types of tools to assess water risk but also to look at, like I was mentioning before, that question of what's the key water challenge in that basin that we should be addressing? Water plan built on AWS also has some tools that help inform that question. Mm. So that's one other way. And then the last thing you know, we're thinking about in those replenishment projects that we're investing, once we were making the investment, how can we not only provide funding but also use AWS expertise to make those projects even more high impact? So can we use AWS services to monitor water quality remotely? Wow. Can we use satellite imagery hosted on AWS to make sure that if we've built a wetland in a remote area or restored a forest that provides water downstream, that the project is still there, that you know, we can do remote monitoring to make sure it's still providing those benefits to the community? Or can we use technologies hosted on AWS to help a water utility identify where they have leaks in their system? so that they can go fix those and increase the amount of water that's available. We're thinking about how to integrate our business and our expertise into the projects that we're implementing in these communities as well. That's fantastic. So not, not just helping ourselves, but helping local government agencies and, and, and local groups that are also working on the problem of water uh, availability for that particular region. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's using what we're good at to mm -hmm to raise the bar across the sector is how I think about it. You know, you could just go and meet a goal like this water positive goal by kind of funding some projects and, mm -hmm. and yeah, you, you know, you could do some good. Mm -hmm. But the, que the bigger question that I want, I want to ask is, what are the key innovations in technology and business models and financing models that are going to help solve problems across the water sector and not just in the communities 
where we're operating. So can we invest in those key innovations that are gonna scale more broadly? And can we elevate them, highlight them, and help accelerate innovation within the water sector to solve a broader set of challenges? And maybe so, this yeah. is an off the wall question, so, so I apologize in advance, but what about the risk of places where there's like too much rainfall and like flooding oh, and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Th does that also factor into this sort of uh, calculation and, and water risk? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I was referring to a bit before when I was talking about the different types of replenishment projects. And mm -hmm. in some areas like uh, Seattle, rains a lot, right? <laughs> they do not have a water scarcity problem. Mm -hmm. The problem there is more around that stormwater runoff, mm -hmm. um, also in the eastern U.S. So there, mm -hmm. we're thinking more about are there, can we enhance stormwater retention, keep it from running off so that there is clean water going into those local waterways instead of polluted water that picks up all the stuff that comes off our cars and <laughs> settles in parking lots. Like yeah. that's actually a really big problem. We have very few pipes going from factories dumping bad stuff into mm -hmm. water in the US anymore. A lot of it mm -hmm. is the problems of dealing with development and runoff from those parking lots and roads. And so wow. in those areas, we're much more focused on water quality and helping figure out how we can channel that water into a benefit rather than keeping it in, in keeping it from having a negative impact on water quality. That's cool. <laughs> it is, yeah. I think a lot of people just from this conversation are inspired, whether it is you own a business or you work in a company. Sustainability is such a big topic right now. Mm. So where can people learn more, keep up to date with our progress towards the goal? Yeah. So we've got a brand new page that we launched this week with the water positive announcement. Uh, it's got already a, a bunch of detail on some of those key metrics around water efficiency, around recycled water use. It's also got a map of all those projects and most importantly, a video with a bunch of people from the different teams within AWS that are helping deliver on this goal. I'm one person, there are you know 20 or more people behind me from design engineering to operations that are doing the hard work of helping improve efficiency, making those connections to recycled water, and you can see some of the really great people that are helping contribute to this goal there. So cool, wow. Will, thank you so much. Nathan, this has been awesome. So thank you so much for AWS On Air.